Greetings in the name of the Most High. Unbelievable. Uh, well, we're just looking at people who are, you know, I now have to classify a lot of these people that are working for this uh, backwards tin pot dictator totalitarian regime USA who tried to turn all the virtues and everything on its ear and everything backwards. For example, um, I just saw a report that there was uh, on the DOD training manuals and, and government documents, they list every single thing that America, there would be a virtue that would be more moral, that would be right, just, or good as a terror threat and to be eliminated from the behavior of the world. So what happened? Okay, I'll tell you what happened. Obviously, the, con the conservatives or whatever, the uh, people that believe in the Constitution, uh, the Christian church, 100% evil and they caused this, but I mean, I'm not going to put the, so much blame on them, but yeah, they can take responsibility. I just don't want to hear them complain. Uh, being living under a gag order that if you see something um, evil taking place, well, by all means, don't say anything because the government comes from God. Again, we need to look at that. In the same way, China has state churches and so does Nazi Germany have state churches. So did Stalinist Russia have state churches. I see today in the news yet another a big old church burned by these very the Muslims that Obama supports. By Muslim Brotherhood Muslims. And they tore the cross off it figuring they did a really good job. These are spiritually retarded people, not realizing that the, the entire walk in Christ is within, the kingdom is within. It's not a building or a cross. You can tear those things down all day long. You only tear yourself down. You only look like an idiot. You only show that you have no, that Allah has given you no spiritual food or understanding whatsoever, but what's happened is your leadership doesn't want you to have a relationship with God, with the Creator. No, no. They want to sink you into a sort of retarded, reactionary political movement that embarrasses itself further on, on a, every passing day with this, uh, you know, uh, political violence, which is supported by Obama and the State Department. And so the State Department and Obama are involved in, or just say Kerry and Obama, two guys that lied amazingly well. Did you see them roll it out? These are the same people that say, if you're against abortion, you're a terrorist. These are the, these are the same two, two guys. I mean, maybe a microcosm of the whole thing, but these, these, are, these guys are saying, Christianity is evil, but violent Islam i.e., um, Al-Qaeda, is good. These are the same two people that support Al-Qaeda. These are the same two people and others like them that got uh, the Benghazi people killed, and then they covered it up. And any in investigation into it means you're a threat to this country or a traitor to this country because you don't take the word of the president. If you are a, uh, say you want to make the world a better place, according to DOD documents, you are considered um, a threat. And the whole reason there's a list like that from the DOD and, the, and, the, and uh, the Pentagon, the Pentagon, why do they even have an American flag since it's so evil? They want to actually pre-arrest uh, people on this list, that would be um, conservatives, patriots, Christians, not any Muslims, not Muslim terrorists. 
they gave a list of say what would be the worst thing blowing up a building I'm just I'm paraphrasing now what I what I'd read because I'm not gonna plenty of bloggers out there have list all this um, something like bombing a building and then at the bottom of the list I mean and then some other things along those lines like terrorist type things then the bottom of the list would be protesting against the government and the right answer is protesting against the government should be broken up. That's the most evil. More evil than blowing up a building or, or some such. I mean, something to that effect. Or more evil than being in a terror cell or that would do something like that. Would be protesting with the proviso that the list is there so that in the future, um, the intention is to uh, break up or not allow in a military dictatorship manner any protests. So that freedom of speech protest against uh, the overreach of the government would be considered evil and you would be potentially arrested if you might tar participate in something like that, like a Tea Party rally or a, which are all peaceful. And this is in military documents. Do you realize what level they have sunk to? This is obviously not American. So the military is now not American. I know people in the military are, but this is the brass. This is the kind of people that Obama hired. So let me get this straight. Obama wants, he wants no dissent, yet he came up through dissent. That was his big thing was dissent. He wants no criticism. He wants unilateral dictatorial war powers, which he got thwarted with yesterday. And, uh, you know, there's a great intervention because, and I'm going to explain that in a minute. Yeah, I'm just amazed how accurate these broadcasts have been over the last week, two weeks, three weeks, leading up to this crisis. But you see, the idea that, so first of all, I feel like if there's a way I could sue these people for traumatizing, you, you know, just, or, or have them arrested. I mean, the idea that they would put immoral acts and, you know, immoral policies in, uh, you know, the, the, this manual that we pay for as taxpayers, that they, that they would hire anti-American false generals who are just basically dictatorial, a military police state type thugs to be brass in the traditional military that has a certain honor to it and tradition to put in traitors. It's be like putting in, uh, put, taking, going and finding, you know, ex-KGB and putting them in, you, you know, as generals and having them write the policy. Um, this is Obama's policy. It, like he, is completely evil. He's a 100% traitor against this country, make no mistake. He says one thing, but when you see the documents of the DOJ and DOD, you see, and that's all his policies, that he is 100% against America, 100% a wannabe dictator, 100% calloused and cold toward he, any human life. It's all about him, including if he, if he has to lob a few to save face, that's going to kill a bunch of people, but it's okay because, see, his ratings need to go up. You have Nancy Pelosi, who made her career on being a dove, not a hawk, suddenly screaming, we have to invade. The president says it, she says it. Who would elect this disgusting woman to anything? Whatever Obama says, she worships. If he contradicts himself, she worships it. Um, you know, they may think he's the devil incarnate, he is the Antichrist, he is the, he is the Messiah, but he's turning out to be a petty little um, slave of the uh, corporate global fascist coming New World Order, whatever. Oh, if you're against the New World Order, you know, a, a corporate fascist dictatorship, then you um, are a threat. So the Department of Defense works for foreign corporate new world order 
or multinational New World Order. They do not work for the people of the United States, yet we pay their paychecks. That is completely unfair. If they want to be foreign, they need to quit the DOJ, the DOD, whatever, the State Department, and go serve foreign governments, since that's what they like so much. But don't expect me to ever listen to anything they have to say when it comes to the interest of the United States in any capacity, because they don't have the best interest of the United States. Now, I know I'm just saying everything you already know. But I think for the record, it must be stated. Obama, the State Department, the Department of Justice, the Department of Defense, the Pentagon are being run by a hostile government takeover by something um, of uh, either communist or whatever you want to call it, something like the regime that took over with the USSR, and are operating without or trying to, without any checks and balances from um, the uh, judiciary or from the Congress or from the people, not only in the United States, but at, at the UN and in every other country. A unilateral dictatorship where they do whatever they want, and if they don't like it, if you back them down on something, they'll just have another false flag attack because they figure you're too stupid to figure out that's what it was to justify whatever else they want to do. Which means that World War III is not far behind. Because as I said, Obama, this is what you pay me for, you, this is what you play me for. And basically it's this, to go into the spirit and tell you what I see. You know, and just I just hope it's accurate. But I told you about the faction, you know, let's just get to... No, I'm just saying that watching it is very painful. I am so glad my daughter's Italian. I know Italy has lots of problems, and it's kind of run by thugs and communists and all that. You know, it's overrun, but she's not being bothered by it. You know, she's in her own kind of world there, and in a lot of ways more secure than we are here. She's not affected by American culture. Indeed, I would not want her to be here in America, and she never will be because she doesn't like America, really. I mean, she likes it okay to visit, but she doesn't like, um, you know, I don't want to speak totally for her, but I mean, the last, as a last update, she doesn't really like America, the vibe here, the people, whatever. She's not really... You know, that the, she's really Italian. You know, she may be half and half and whatever, but she's really been, you know, she's really Italian. I mean, she is, um, it's not so much against America, but she would never want to move here or emigrate here, at least up to this point. I'll leave it open-ended because people change, but, you know, and it's partially because of all the things she sees in the news and all the things she hears about America, she doesn't want to come here. You know, she'll come here because to see, to see me, to see Trish, and we meet up in various locations. We have a great time and, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's more like in the future I'll be going to Italy because I really don't want to subject her to this situation here. Sorry, that's just the way. I, and if I were going to have children, you know, again, which I'm, I'm not, but if I were going to have another child, um... I would move. I would not want my child being brought up in this filth, in this disgusting um, anti-God, anti-respect, you know, respect, anti-human environment as America, in this coldness they call America. Do you realize the other day that, was it South Carolina or somewhere, somewhere north or south, maybe it was south, outlawed homelessness, so there you go. Completely un-American. And it was a Christian guy that did it. Yeah, I mean, this was the news about a week ago. Outlawed homelessness. And, and so the homeless are shipped to some kind of camp, i.e. a prison. And um, if they come back into town, then they go to prison there. So it's either prison or prison. So this is the beginning of rolling out the rounding up of the homeless, which I knew they would do. And they would either kill them or round them all into camps as a pretext for rounding anyone else they don't lock up into camps, 
Further to this, these stupid people, when they were SDS, when they were, you know, the revolutionaries back in the 60s and 70s, and that's who runs things today, they had a policy, Bill Ayers and company, of actually ha having camps for retraining and also death camps where they, they felt they would kill at least a quarter of Americans because they wouldn't be able to get with the program. And that was their policy back in the late 60s, remember? The Chicago 7, SDS, th those groups, Weather Underground. That's what they were discussing back then, and that's been... I saw a documentary of that effect with them saying those very words. That, okay, so... Um, these weren't revolutionaries for the people, the people's voice and all that. These were basically the same people as Stalinist Russia, as communism. Look, how many people did Mao kill? 90 million, 100 million, maybe 200 million. 100 million to uh, Lenin and Stalin. They're bloodthirsty murderers, totalitarians, dictators, evil people. And we knew this from day one because we trace their backgrounds. They're people who should be arrested for terror threats themselves. But if you're a left-wing revolutionary, I guess, in the Mao sort of way, you will not be on that DOD list, even if you plan to blow up something. You will, right? If you're a Muslim burning churches, you're fine, thank you very much, you're one of us. If you're killing Christians, it's cool, you're one of us, says Obama in his policies. In other words, killing Christians, we're rolling it out worldwide, we'll bring it to America after we, we, we hone it. Oh, by the way, I'm a Christian, he says. Anyone who says he isn't a Christian should be arrested immediately as a terror threat. I guess they know how outrageous this all sounds, but to see it on official documents with the seal of the United States and see the American flag flying proudly next to or at the top of the letterhead where these policies are written is just... It's... It'd be like if they took Jesus off the cross and just defecated all over him to just, you know, even if he was dead, just for one more level. And then had a, uh, uh, and then stuck him up as the poop hardens in the sun. He's just a big giant ball of poop, let's say. They have an orgy and a celebration outside. And then they start eating their feces as well. You know, something, a vision that bad. You know, or pulling out their own entrails and saying, isn't it fun? Let's die. <laughs> it's on that, that's the spirit of them. That's the spirit of them. I think Kubrick had in his movie, uh, I, Dr. Strangelove, your commie has no, uh, has no regard for human life, not even his own. And, um, you know, basically that was read out of a policy of the United States back then. That was the official DOD and Pentagon policy. Communists have no um, regard for human life, not even their own. That was in the, that, that was like reading this. That's what you would have read back then. So remember, they're ideologues and they'll, they're, in other words, you know, like the Muslims, they'll die blowing something up because um, they're, they're a death cult. And it's all about the dictatorial power of a few who have millions of dollars, like the guy in France, Hollande, he has millions and millions of dollars, right? stuffed away in Swiss bank accounts while taxing the middle class and the people who can barely make it a hundred percent. This is, this, is kind of, this is a man who says he cares for the people. And then his rich buddies all go free and they all have Swiss bank accounts and they do this off the backs and, and destroy the middle class to boost themselves in their elitism and lord it over the whole world by destroying the French people. They destroy the backbone. And you know, the end result is, without a middle class, the country would collapse. The French Revolution would be overturned. And they would then cheer that. 
There is no moral. There's no moral high ground. They worship death. They enjoy destroying a person and then watching him die. And they boost themselves and move to another five-star hotel and <clears throat> gin it up all over again. Find another country they can destroy, that they can lord it over, destroy the working people, destroy the productivity of the people. Watch it all implode, then scalp all the millions and billions of dollars away, and then off to another five-star hotel where they can plot another country's demise. I've seen them. Stayed in a nice hotel, saw them. I see them at 5 a.m. in the gym. Yeah, sure, they, they're working hard for this, for this end. I've seen the, the, the corporate fascists. And they all wear <laughs> certain kind of suits and ties, and, you know, they're, there's a certain vibe there, you know. It's like, you know, there's a certain arrogance they have in their collective. And I'm like, you know, we're, we're all individuals under God's eyes. You don't have any special privilege, buddy. You have no special privilege. You think you could just align with this, the sort of alignment of corporate fascism and communism and, ide and ideologues and you, who, who are intent on killing at least uh, four-fifths of the human population on Earth to depopulate it to the right size for them. Right, it's always for them, for their selfishness, for their narcissism. It's like Obama, everything is for his narcissism, his selfishness. Doesn't look good in the polls? Go lob a few. You know, just did a drone strike, 15, 20 people died. Who knows how many were, oh, there was only one guy that was the target, but the 15 or 20 died. You know, they didn't go into it much. But CNN posts it because CNN is a, is a propagandist liar, so they'll post 100% uh, fabrication and lies just if it'll boost the president's ratings. And if necessary, they will encourage the president to go kill innocent people to boost his own ratings, and they'll back him up no matter who he bombs. These people were all peace protesters before this regime. Now they're all wearing jack boots, and uh, you know now they're all wearing Nazi uniforms. And make, make no mistake, what you're seeing now is more like the Nazis, kind of a cross between the Nazis and the KGB, but it's Stasi Germany, that sort of thing. Um, and it's already printed as policy in their manuals and in their training manuals and their hiring manuals that to pass and to be, get a job there, you have to A, hate Christians, hate America, hate tradition, hate education, um, hate life, meaning love abortion, um, and have 100% fidelity to the new dictator, whoever it is. I guess they're planning on having him there for life. Where the people, this couldn't have happened unless the people had a robust history of rising up. But you see, this plan had been in place for, I don't know, 50, 60 years. Dumb the people down, dumb them down with drugs, give them the, the British music invasion was 100% from them, out of their think tanks. Now this sort of globalist, uh, you know, they tried, you know, Nazism was their experiment, communism was their experiment. The same people, the eugenicists, all those kind of people that have talked about, you hear about today, were planning this from the very beginning. Khrushchev said, we will conquer you without firing a shot. Now you have people competing to see how base they can be, and then you gobble up all their records, America. So you have an appetite for your own destruction. And you'll see it, probably in a nuclear war. And then on that day, I suppose, you know, maybe there'll be whatever is left of you that's still alive, which I doubt much anyway. We'll probably have that O.S. moment where you realize that, you know, you had gone to sleep and in so doing destroyed yourself, your country, your children, your grandchildren, everything. And, and they laughed at you the whole way. They laughed at you, America. They said, we've got you now. All the way back in the 60s, they felt they had you. Because they realized you would never protest. You would never rise up. You don't want to be called a racist. You don't want to be called a, some sort of bigot. 
So they, um, they won. And now what I realize is, when I see those official documents, I know that, oh, they conquered the United States already. It's not like it's up for grabs. I just haven't understood what I've been looking at. And what they want to do is re-educate people slowly through the media and through, through Hollywood, which is the fascist arm of this group, which is not fascist, but it's, well, it's corporate owned where the corporations tell the governments what to do with the world. So it's global fascism, corporate fascism, corporatism, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. So basically what they're trying to do is re-educate us to let us know we've been conquered, the war is over, and we need to quit fighting, which is why those, those bullet points are in their, um, their documents. And we need to quit fighting because we lost the war, and we need to be told that Obama is, and, and this is what I wanted to tell you yesterday, we're being told that Obama is a dictator, and we need to respect that. We lost the war legitimately, some time ago. And the policies were changed because when, when there's a regime change, when there's a conquering, then the new regime writes the manuals. So the regime has rewritten all the DOD and all the DOD. You know, they keep, for the people that are hard to reach, they keep, you know, some of the American architecture around flags. But they want to change that. It's just that they keep it around. They don't want to shock people awake. So they want to let you know that you've been conquered. It's a global regime, a globalist regime. They have a different flag and a different set of morals and values. You need to adopt to those or you will be arrested. You will be rounded up if you maintain your fidelity to say toward Jesus Christ and to the Bible you're going to, that's, you know, all that has been made illegal because you've been conquered as a nation already. See, this isn't even about a fight like the Infowar fight. This isn't even about that. It's about them letting you know the state of being that you're in and your legal status. You know, America is not the America of before. It was conquered fair and square and they have the spoils of war and they put their own people in, and they have rewritten all the manuals to make it that any kind of traditionalist or American would be outlawed because this is not America. America was conquered. This is them. And their rules are maximum fidelity to El Leader, maximum abortion, maximum war, especially dictatorial war, the elimination of Congress, the elimination of the judiciary, the setting up of tribunals and, and groups of, that will manage people that don't quite have the right mindset. In other words, the 1984 people won, and they're trying to slowly let you know that you've been conquered, and those who resist it, of course, will be punished or made examples of so that the rest of you will cower and um, you know, be good little sheep to the slaughter and die on cue because that's your job. And I, I don't know, I think maybe the leader will be called the emperor possibly in the future, or the people's leader. They like to do that, but it's really a dictator. Um, you know, whether or not this corporation decides to kill landowners and all, that's, very, that's the ideologue part. I'm not sure about that. I think it's just basically confiscation through taxation, having everything be through legal means. You've been trained now to accept Christians being slaughtered and churches being burned and destroyed by Muslims who the Obama, that, that Obama supports that activity because that's what you're seeing, Obama, in that activity. They put it every day on the news over and over again. So you start to say, ah, yes, if I'm with Obama, I'm with Al-Qaeda. I'm with killing of the Christians. Yes, and that becomes reinforced in your mind. And so that's who Obama actually, if you want to see when the mask is off, who he is, he is that. And they all are. And they all are on the same page. And they all, they believe that, you know, the inner circle believes he has, you know, divine godlike powers. And they are waiting for that, that true possession of the devil, I guess, 
which they would call God, to take over and save humanity. And saving humanity would be people who were... Uh, I also believe you're going to see the return you know, of castration of males because they realize that males are hard to control and you know, to really kind of mute that freedom thing and more fluoride different things in the water to feminize, to feminize most people. Because if you have a feminized population, it's going to be more submissive and easier to handle as they roll out the big transition, which would be um, you know, ultimately getting people off the land, off out of rural areas, and moving them into cubicles in, stacked up in cities where they can be managed. These would be the people in the film Elysium who are on Elysium enjoying themselves. Not the people that you, you, know, you see today like the, the guy that got rich because he was formed a corporation that did something for Silicon Valley and he has a yacht or whatever, a Larry Ellison kind of guy. No, those are not the people on Elysium, sorry. Oh, Larry Ellison could afford it. No, the people on Elysium are the people who through government and through this corporate fascism connected to government erect the space station based on the hard work of the people who they then kill uh, as they go off into space. This is not um, private entrepreneurs, not at all. This is not billionaire entrepreneurs in Forbes magazine, not at all. The people on Elysium would be Obama and company and some of his, his, his friends from Hollywood, his celebrity friends, they would be on Elysium, but not you. I don't care if you're a rich corporate guy that's a member of all these country clubs and prestigious and has status and all that. You're not invited you, because, see, you're still thinking there's the United States and that you're an entrepreneur and that you're a conservative or you're a this or that or whatever you are. Even if you, if you cynically throw money at left or right, left or right's the same, as you've seen through... You take a John Boehner and a McCain, and you take, uh, say, on the left, um, you know, Nancy Pelosi or whatever, they're all the same. I mean, there's, there's only one party for them, that's Washington. And there's only one person they serve, they serve the corporate technocracy or the corporate um, globalist, New World Order, whatever. Uh, anyway, so they want you to know they won, and that retraining the kids, because... The kids are being retrained a la what I told you for the last 10 years through pedophilia. You know, there's a couple of things that are constant in Satanist. And all com communism is the face of Satanism. That's the political face of Satanism. And the, the leaders are all spiritualists and occultists. Absolutely. That's, that's like a cliche. Oh, the dumb people out there, they think they're atheists. But see, they don't want you to know the secrets of power which could only come from you know, spiritual wickedness or spiritual holiness, one or the other. But they, are, they, they will power through rituals. And the biggest one is getting the kids sexualized. Look, I went through this whole thing. I, I know this from the very ground up. You sexualize the kids, get them uh, paying into the system at you know, three, four, five years old. And then you've got them. You make sexualizing them. In other words, yes, the teachers must encourage sexual activity in the classroom live and even get involved themselves, which is what they will make legal eventually, but that's what they really want because this group in power, they thrive off a couple of things. One is death, the other is sex with children. Now, war and sex with children. That, that's the, their thing. And um, just take Los Angeles in the elite L.A. The big, deep, dark secret there that gets people killed. Well, maybe not now that it's all out in the open, but it was the pedophile networks that ran Los Angeles. They ran Hollywood, ran the corporate uh, L.A., ran the big businesses, ran the military industrial complex. Children. And I, I wrote, wrote a whole thing back then in the 90s. I don't know, I, I'm repeating it now, but this is too bad you couldn't have read what I had written about how children, robots, Area 51, UFOs, end times, all this stuff ties together. 
and I tied it all together in, in a fictional format. But it's just too bad that movie couldn't have been produced. I guess it was too... Boy, I tell you, underground bases, aliens, this gal wakes up to find out that her husband is an actual robot, an actual, you know, cyborg. And, but he was so perfect, no one would ever suspect that until he started going on tilt. And then lived out in the desert, and uh, there were all kinds of abductions going on, and she wouldn't remember. And there were different star systems like Lyra, Sirius. Well, gee, where did I get all that info? How did I know to write all that? Somehow I just know about all that. It's all connected, interplanetary connections. It's all out there. We're not alone here. It's, there's all kinds of things going on. But the one thing that, in the screenplay that... Well, maybe I have another copy somewhere. I may have to go read it. Maybe I could read it to you. It could be like a little movie with audio. I'll put some sound effects. <sighs> It's like I'm mad because I knew everything then. In 1994 is when I wrote that. And I knew everything. I knew it all in 1994. See, they don't want you to know about all that and how it all ties in. And even Jesus and God and all the angels and everything ties in. They don't want you to know it. They, they want you to remain compartmentalized because they don't want you getting away. It, even the moon and the soul scalping device there of taking souls that are not in Christ, I have to emphasize that, who are not with God, they go to this recycling machine on the moon. I don't know about it. Well, the vision I had then, or that, that uh, screenplay I wrote, the main thing about that is, not only was it a great screenplay, it would make a great movie, but it made it all into a gestalt so you could see it. You can see how it all works in one flash of an entertainment movie. You know, boom, there it is. It's all there, everything. Buddhists, Hindus, you know, other planets, reincarnation, not reincarnation, recycling, moon, planets, underground bases, aliens, and what it's all about. Hey, even then, I knew it was all about, like, end times cults living up in the woods, separatist end times cults living out separately, prophesying about the end of the world. And you know what? Even though I kind of botched, I did it better in my book, Lamb, actually, with the end of the world. But there is an end to this. It is at God's behest. I'm afraid I wasted 35 minutes here talking about around the topic, you know, talking about this geopolitics. You know, the, the last thing I have to say about America is just really sad for me to see, you know, Obama giving... Um, out medals of honor and stuff, you know, to honor the military because he wants to go on strike, so he's trying to remind you. He's just mind-controlling you to see that we have a rich tradition and he's giving that award last week, the day before he wants to announce he's going to bomb. It's just all so sad to watch this guy. I mean, to me, the biggest torture has been to see children take over for actual men and then turn it into kind of a Lord of the Flies country. I just, you know, and communist kind of people, they're like children. They're not, they're not grown-ups, they're not mature, they don't stand for any principle. They, <clears throat> they're not even, they don't even believe in their own rhetoric. They just believe in power and bowing to it and struggling to see who gets on top and everyone worships that leader and that's all they know. They're very hive mind reptilian oriented people. And they're very stupid when it comes to anything that has to do with the spirit or nuance. Or they can't, they can't do nuance. They just know brute brutality. They know reacting and reactionary. They don't know philosophy. You know, they don't know art, obviously, as you can see now. They don't, you know, unless it's the art of, you know, a big Obama face on, you know, hanging in, at the Met in New York or something. You know, that they understand, like Lenin and Stalin, and, you know, they understand dictators, and, you know, they understand epaulets and little military ribbons. And um, they understand perversion, drugs, um, and the most bizarre perversions that you can think of being legal for them whenever, whatever, they have a great appetite for um, 
stuff that would be so bizarre to you that we, sh we shouldn't even mention it, as Paul said. We, there's some things we just shouldn't even mention. So I won't mention it. It's just so sad. And I told my own family that if you don't stop this stuff, this is what's going to happen. And they just, they weren't there. There's nobody home. They're dead now. I told other people, if you don't do anything about this, this is what's going to be. It's going to be hell. You know, people eating each other's entrails in the, in, on, on Main Street and, and, and while having an orgasm. I mean, just the most bizarre, insane things you can imagine. The most perverse, you know, perverting DNA so that people look deformed and, 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 and doing it on purpose to people and then sitting there and having an orgasm over it. You know, that sort of level. Don't you get it? Don't you see how bad that hell is earth or heaven could be earth? The people in power now, they would bring hell to earth Everything that we predicted they would do the last five years, they have done exactly. Why wouldn't they do the rest of it? To bring what I'm describing up to the foreground. For sure, they want, the next thing would be, to, the, the, they don't want the pedophile networks to be in secret. They want to bring them out and, and make children understand you're to be seen and not heard. You're not to, your sex is not your own. Your genitals are not your own. There's a high price paid for those. And by God, you're going to pay it. You're going to put out, if you want to be in this society, it may not be published for a while. It may not be out there in the news for a while. But the kids are going to know what's expected of them. And they've already done it under the, under the title Sex Education for Kindergartners, which was an Obama policy, uh, because he said it's the right thing to do. All that is is training them to be, you know, good little prostitutes or whatever, and uh, to service the adults. I mean, that's, this, that's where this goes. I mean, in other words, it's not for sex education, teaching them that, you know, one, this boy has a penis. And, um, they, they did a thing of, uh, you know, of, of, of saying that, you know, the, the term mother and father is outlawed, you go to jail. I was at some video I saw. And... It was a petition to send people to jail if they use the term mother or father because it's offensive. And they all signed, and everyone they went up to on the street, or you know, anyone that came up to the petition, might have been Mark Dice, I'm not sure who it was now, but, but they signed it. They all signed it. Yes, that's evil. Well, we'd like to round up gun owners and put them in uh, camps, confiscate their weapons to make it a safer society for Obama. Oh yes, and they all sign it. So they're, you know, they're gone. These aren't even human beings. And they're also slated for destruction. Because if they get their nuclear way, which is what they were trying to do with Syria, until, I guess, factions, there's factions in the military that are good. I should speak up the good parts of the military right now, and law enforcement, and Americans, whatever. You good guys out there, um, by the way, you've been labeled as evil. But, you know, um, now would be the time to... Uh, you know, be heard. And I know you already are. I know this whole debacle with Syria, you guys had a lot to do with it, so thank you. But um, this is just, you know, they're going to try it again. <laughs> you know? And I still wouldn't be surprised if Obama lobs a few either today or tomorrow. That's why we're up so early covering it. And I'm sorry I went on this big digression diatribe about the sadness to see, because I saw these documents and it didn't bother me. I said, started laughing at them, and then I had time to sleep on it, and then this morning, you know, it really does bother me to see DOJ documents that say that basically Republicans, they've done all but say Republicans uh, should be arrested. I mean, they, they said they must destroy the Republican Party this year. So this is, this is what they're up to. But they're making a policy, in these, and these manuals can be changed, by the way. A new regime comes in, it would all get changed. But it was Bush that brought you... Let's, let's be very clear. Authoritarian George W. Bush, New World Order himself, Mr. 9-11, brought you Homeland Security, the Patriot Act, people like Janet Napolitano, authoritarians, and this whole policy that's been written up, a conservative Republican George W. Bush made that possible. Without him, there could be no Obama. 
the two of them, he handed off the baton to Obama. They pretended to hate each other, but uh, Obama carried on the legacy of George W. Bush. Now, Oliver Stone was smart enough to wake up to that, but uh, Ali, is it too little, too late? Is it too little, too late? You know, a lot of people I can't get to, and probably he'll never hear this podcast, but a lot of people I can't get to because I bring in Jesus and I bring in God, and that really turns people off because of all the politicizing of this whole thing, and God and Jesus, unfortunately, those names have lost the credibility of the world. They hear that and they immediately discount your broadcast. They immediately call you biased and they don't understand that I have to go in the spirit with Yahweh himself to get the information that I brought to you that was ahead of the news, was a leading edge. That came from him. Not from my imagination, obviously, because nobody's that accurate. And um, not, I'm not a pundit. I'm usually wrong when I guess. And it didn't come from the news, and it wasn't conjecture based on the news so far. And a lot of the truth I have about their appetites and what they do, besides being experiential, were, were things that I've been shown and been able to handle because my father, the Lord, was there holding my hand, showing me like Ezekiel what they do. You know? Can you handle significant others in your life taking their masks off and being uh, blood-drinking Satanists, you know, orgiastic, uh, just, <laughs> you know, like that. Can you, and then they put the mask back on. Oh, yes, you see, we have rules here. And you go, how could those two things be in that same body? And being able to emotionally handle that and then say, yep, and the Lord showed me why everything is. And now I'm at peace with it. Or as Jonathan Cleck does, he'd, he'd walk right up to a person and just start talking to the thing in them. He wouldn't even bother talking to them. <laughs> and that was cool. That was cool. I, you know, I had been so traumatized by it all that I, you know, I, I, I was scared to death of even admitting that it existed. So that was good for me to be exposed to him because... Uh, there's nothing to be afraid of. These things are inside these people. As soon as somebody takes the, uh, the oath or passes to the other side, they get that demonic entity within them like the exorcist. And from that day forward, their lives are, they are slaves. They're not allowed to even think their own thoughts anymore. They're given thoughts like a formula that would win in Silicon Valley. or They're, they're given all kinds of things like that a musical uh, progression that will lead to a hit song, abilities to sing and play instruments that they never had before. Then, but now, with the Miley Cyrus thing, you see there's an opening of the gate of a whole new form of entertainment. And it's being lauded and applauded. I, I use Twitter for the, for the pulse. It's being lauded and applauded all over Twitter like, like you know, it's the, the, the bomb. People don't even realize they came a hair's trigger hair away from being nuked off the face of the earth as if they never were because you would have no seed, right? No seed is the ultimate curse, right? And that got thwarted. You see, because a conflict in Syria leads to a conflict with Russia. You know, the whole, even Russia said it would stand down. But, um... Russia's already moved in all their bombers and all this stuff. We moved all our B1s and B2s. We moved our entire arsenal over there. We moved a WW3 level arsenal over to Syria, you know, or surrounding area already. Not for lobbing a few bombs like Clinton in the aspirin factory when he needed Monica Lewinsky off the news. No, 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 no. We have a World War III level. Um, all that's been done in your name. Everything Obama's done is done in your name. Everything the DOD and DOJ and the Pentagon and everybody else have done uh, in terms of their policies is done in your name. All the destruction of churches, the backing of Al-Qaeda, um, and the, the destruction of churches in Egypt is being done by the State Department in your name. They hate Christ. Through proxy, they want to destroy Christianity. That's what Obama's policy is. It should be obvious to everybody now. Just check the DOD manual. Check what it says about Christians. You know, 
Only Satan. You know, the, the, all these people are just little masks. When you pull the mask away from Obama, Pelosi, uh, the generals, whoever, who are all involved in all this, the, behind the mask is one guy. It's Satan, 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 or the demonic hierarchy, which have different, you know, there's various personalities there, but it's the same guy. It's the same guy behind. The curtain is their faces, right? Pull their face off, it's the guy behind the curtain. Those people aren't even there anymore. This is a spiritual battle, friends. Make no mistake about it. This is the Sabbath, so we're going to share the word. And the word is, this is a spiritual battle. This is a spirit. Look, um, totalitarianism is Satanism. It's, it's a spirit of Satan. Satan is, Satan's spirit can be summed up in one word, death. That's what Satan, it's a death cult. They worship their own death. The ones at the very top of the pyramid already have diseases and things that will kill all, not just all human life, but all biological life on earth in about two weeks. That's how, you know, and they're, they're they just, and they would, they would be dead themselves. Some of these people don't even want to be merged with machines. They want everything extinct. And that's just how they're wired. That's who they are. That's what they do. This is all behind that veil, behind the mask of the occult. They're all there. The, the occult means those behind the mask of the occult, dark side of the moon, are those who worship death. What's the whole alien program? Use humans as slaves, right? And or use the DNA to create other kinds of creatures other than God intended to twist it. And that's why they're these half insect, half this, half that aliens through, through genetic manipulation of the human that they got those forms. And many of those are robots. So you know, the wedding of, right? And it's all bad. And their DNA is bad because everything these guys make, look at Big Pharma, all the creatures they make, all the aliens are not made well. You know, they need more DNA to fix it because there's side effects to everything Big Pharma. Everything they do has side effects that they need to then fix. So by trying to be God, they've ruined everything. They're trying to hurt our DNA right now with chemtrails with water, fluoridation, and other kinds of poisons. Uh, GMO foods, it's all kind of a genetic lab right now. Well, the good news is they, they cannot affect you, and they can't harm you, and they won't poison you because God will make it so you adapt to those of you who are his. But them, they will be uh, mutated and gross. And there will be problems in the mutations. Um, you know, that's just the way it is. The Lord says that no poison will affect you and, and what they do with the water and the food and all that is poison. But I wouldn't, a child of God needn't worry. As Kunita said, he said, I just let the Lord, I bless it. Whatever I eat, whatever opportunity there is to eat or drink, I pray the Lord's blessing on it and I don't worry. And he's indeed doing quite well. So, um, I just give you that little bit of advice, not to, not to covet so much, not to keep trying to save your lives with lots and lots of obsession over GMO supplements. I mean, do some, but you know, not go crazy. The Lord hates that. You try to take the place of God in, in curing yourselves. Just give praise to God, and if you know, sometimes you have to eat some fries that are GMO. Fine. You you know, if, 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 in other words, let's. You don't need to even look at that. He, you're shielded. You're protected. Why, I don't know. How, I don't know. Okay, so turning now to what happened last week and into this uh, Syria thing. And the reason you're here for me so much now is because when we're in a war footing, like a WW3 footing, uh, we're all, all of us, in the, in the alt media, for however we get there, we all are, like, activated. You know, we're all on duty, like, like a fireman, right? There's a big fire, we're down the pole, we're there on the scene. You know, um, it, it, it didn't matter whether I do a podcast once a month even. Um, now at this point, it's, uh, you know, emergency situation. So it's uh, basically there. Uh, it hasn't gone away. As I tweeted out the other day, um, Obama's going to have to lob a few just to save face. You know, I, I'm against that kind of policy of killing people and murdering people to save your own face politically. I think that makes a person to, into a monster, but that's what they do. Um, 
he's also got an arsenal over there far bigger than just a tailored punishment of Assad. He's got, you know, the bombers, and some of which obviously need repair, you know, because one crashed in Montana. I mean, you know, there's, you're bringing out this old, almost like Dr. Strangelove machinery to punish one little dictator, one little country who's surrounded by the enemy, who's being attacked by a State Department that is John Kerry, head of the State Department, is backing Al-Qaeda, who used chemical weapons on people to blame it on, on a false flag, killing supposedly 1,400 of their own people, to blame it on Assad as a pretext so Obama can go in the big hero and, and not just take out military targets, but, um, you know, create mass chaos so that the country can be conquered. No regard for human life whatsoever. He almost did it unilaterally. He, he didn't take it to Congress and had no intention of it. He didn't sell it to anybody because the alternative media, that's you and me, folks, you're part of it too. We exposed the false flag. We blamed it on John Kerry, who did it. Caught him red-handed. This, this vape, I got this thing called, um, Frank, you'll be interested to know, called The Odyssey by Totally Wicked E-Liquid. You know, I haven't, it's a space age thing that they developed from scratch with this university in uh, England. And at first it was really complicated to put together. It's a vape, you know, a vape thing. Um, the good news is I haven't had any tobacco since I got this thing. And uh, I don't even puff on this very much. You just saw me just now have one. And uh, wow, what a thing. And plus it's a, something neat to look at. It looks like it's definitely a conversation piece. Um, yeah, no, I've, not, I've seen a lot of people that got numb. And, and yeah, you know, I, I know that tobacco can be very, it can really reel you in. But I mean, I'm feeling uh, just in a couple of days, just really... Uh, like, you know, I just haven't had any desire for it. So I'm just like, ah, cool. And this thing is not, doesn't make you have a desire for it so much. It's just, it's just a really cool thing because I do enjoy, you know, I just don't want the, my lungs to be foggied up or whatever. I need them. So, yeah, I'm, I, can, I guess I can testify that that method of using uh, e-cigs well, and particularly this one, because it's very clean. There's no plastic filter. It's all 100% stainless steel. There are no plastic parts. None. <laughs> so it's very surgical. You know, it's like, a, like an instrument, but it's really cool. So, uh, yeah, um, that there went to the design. You know, I, dab, I didn't even get up to, you know, probably was it like around a half a pack a day, maybe. But um, that's been kind of waning. It was really sporadic with me, but... You know, it was something I was concerned about because it was, I could tell it, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, it was putting, a, it was impinging on me in some way. And now I feel like um, a lot better. And I just love the fact that, you know, it, it, it didn't make me its bitch, you know, um, that I've gotten the master over it. So that's cool. And I enjoy, I enjoy cigars every once in a while. But everything, uh, tobacco things are messy. And in the studio, I don't want tobacco and <clears throat> ashes getting over my uh, gear in the desk. Uh, all kinds of high-end equipment is screwed into that desk. I don't want it leaking down in the, you know, and being a mess and discoloring. I don't want it, you know, I don't want anything like that in there. Or the panels getting absorbed with smoke or anything. So it's, it was like, yeah, cool. This is almost like, um, it uses a, uh, a lithium, rechargeable lithium battery. You know, it's different from the e cigs. It's called the Odyssey. I just have the standard stainless steel one, basic one that they did. I saw a video on it of the guy who designed it, his prototype, and it just was a lot of thought. It was like, wow, this is like the same kind of guy who could build a car or something, you know? So it was pretty cool. And uh, whatever. I'm no expert in it, like, like others, but I will say this you want off the cigarettes and, you know, probably a way to better health. These don't have, from what I understand, um, there may be some consequences, but they don't really have consequences. All I know is 
you know, once I hit the first day and the second day and then all of a sudden I didn't care about cigarettes, you know, it's like, wow, that was fast. Cool. <laughs> Couldn't be happier. Um, the other thing about cigarettes is the, how much tax goes to them. I, I don't like it. But again, all these concerns I have over the United States, the DOD, DOJ manuals of, for, for the like FBI and for the military about conservatives, I just never thought I would see a day where that sort of thing would be even possible. It just shows to me that the United States was conquered and what they're trying to do is let people know that they were conquered so they can acclimate to the new, you know, a totalitarian, corporate, fascist, Nazi-type uh, regime and be able to get along with it and be trained in how to behave in such a regime that any kind of thoughts of individual liberty or the Constitution or anything like that would be considered criminal. Um, so that would mean technically, and maybe, I, maybe people are afraid to say this, what it means, my friends, is that we have been conquered as a country, a different method than, than an overt military strike, but not, nevertheless, the victors are foreign, and they conquered us. It took about 40 years or so, but they, they won. And there is, you know, you can protest, but then they'll just round you up because there is, it won't be allowed. Um, the people that voted for Obama, they don't know that they were conquered, that who support Obama and, and the dictatorial powers and all that that's going on. They don't, they don't know that they were conquered or they feel they, they, they're, <clears throat> they're completely unaware. But they may not even care in the end if it's a dictatorship and Obama's the dictator. I think many of them cheered that on. So they, they kind of knew it, but they already are welcomed into this regime. They're welcomed especially the celebrities and all the people that were on the team to help this thing come to pass, they're given, you know, they're treated well. The people who are Americans are treated shabbily because America was conquered and it shouldn't be called America anymore. They need to change the name. Uh, so that's where we are now. Will there be a counterinsurgency? Yeah, but any kind of counter anything would be, um, you know, cracked down upon like we predicted in 2008. The conquering has happened. It was George Bush that, was the, that carried the big baton for the conquering. He did, the, he did the, the heaviest lifting. And then Obama came in and continued Bush. And the two of them are synonymous with this conquering of the people by bringing in, by destroying, for example, the, the depression, Bush, and the, the corporate you know, Goldman Sachs elite or whatever, did the wealth that they took uh, never came back. 60% of the wealth was taken, never came back. The middle class was broken in a million pieces, never came back. American values were then switched in the middle of the night, never came back. I mean, left and right, cats and dogs, I mean, we had our differences, but I mean, you know, nothing like this. I think this, the left and the right, and whoever, whatever this political fight was all about, I think we can all come together, don't you think? I mean, do you want liberty, or do you want to be part of a collective, uh, a dehumanized number, you know, sent to work in a pre-prescribed pre-prescribed -pre life where you have no say and told what to do and your creativity muted and your uh, sexuality muted or, or feminized so that you'll be controllable through, the, through spiking the water and the food and with certain feminizing drugs that would make it all more manageable. And the further thing I saw was that the Americans will be replaced by, no, not by the Hispanics, uh-uh, not by La Raza, not by the blacks, but by the Chinese. <laughs> that's, that's, that's already, uh, so that would be like a neutron bomb, nuke, whatever, but then, and I'm hoping that doesn't come to pass. But it seems like the Americans, you know, the people of America want to be destroyed. That, see, that's the other component that I'm, we're afraid to look at. 
we want to be conquered and we want to be destroyed. And we want to die to make room for somebody else coming in and we want off. We, we, it's, it's, it's like a self-destruct uh, programming within us. It's time to die, get out of the way. So that's also going on. Imp impossibly. The movie set we had a few years ago was completely different. But that all changed in 9-11. Uh, um, that was the final blow, and that was the conquering right there. That was it. You just didn't know that was it. The plan was to tell you eventually so that you can die on cue and make room for someone else. That's why sterilization is very important. We don't want you having kids because you're done. Especially you liberals. You're already participating in not having children, but I mean, you're done. You see, you're being moved out of the way now. I know you're all saying that's the right thing to do and you, you enjoy your own destruction, but I mean, at least admit that you had a, a big hand in bringing it about. Now you should enjoy the rest of it of going extinct. Congratulations. What a fine humans you are. Be sure to put a middle finger in God's face in your last dying moment so you can get that free trip to the moon, okay? Take it from me. You'll love it. Maybe they'll recycle you into like a spam can. <laughs> So when they're eating you, you can be tortured all over again. Uh, trying to have a little levity here with a little bit of humor. Um, is that gallows humor? I don't know. I, I just really feel sorry. And now the Syrian update. Well, you saw how there were factions behind the scenes, or you should have seen that. In other words, some, somebody told this guy who was going to bomb on Thursday, you either stand down or you're toast. Period. Uh, we're not even talking coup d'etat, like, like nice. We're talking, there is no you. And I believe that was, um, or any of your buddies, or anything. I think it came down to something like that in the background. I, I believe that that's coming from the Pentagon. I believe there's a war at the Pentagon uh, between forces of, of, of real Americans that, that you know, you better just be very grateful and pray for those versus these totalitarian globalists who came in to take over and overthrow it. And they don't want you, the public, to know because if you ever wake up, then that's game over for them. They insidiously weave their way into it. Anyway, there's a big fight there at the Pentagon. There's a fight inside the NSA. There's a fight inside the FBI. I'm, I'm going to make all these predictions now. And, and, and I'm just saying, I don't know how I know this. I just know it. There are these fights, factions, and they're fierce. And going around the world, we have the Vatican faction, we've got the, uh, obviously the Muslim Brotherhood faction, but they're small compared to uh, these other factions globally. We have the UN that has spoken out against a unilateral invasion, which Obama wants to do a unilateral invasion, and he's still going to probably try to do it, even though if he does, I will say this, his life is in great danger from that point forward. And the lives of all those who work with him, his family, and everybody else. Is that serious? And, and yours and mine too. <laughs> you know, especially if we're talking nukes here. So I think we have much more in common to want to try to survive as a human race. I think the idea here was to destroy us as a human race. And it's got nothing to do with the New World Order. It's just basically destruction. It's, you know, the end game. Well, there is no end game right now. We're right in the middle of a fluid situation. The Lord also told me, and I told you, I will intercede because there are enough here to warrant that. It is not Sodom and Gomorrah formula. There's more here than what Abraham talked about. Hallelujah. Those of you who understand what I'm saying, understand that little bit of wisdom wouldn't have been possible unless somebody had put a Bible in my hand some time ago. That's in the Bible, that formula. Too bad they didn't read it. Or they would have known they hadn't gotten there yet. So you've got angelic, warring angels intervening who um, have the power to stop all nukes, who have the power to um, stop boys in their little toys in the sandbox, who have the power to put down everything and everyone, 
who have the power to kill anyone they want or need to, and who have the power to tell a president, a king, a dictator, or anyone, you will stand down and you will stand down now or this is what happens to you and everything you care about. And they have the power to back that up from the almighty Yahweh himself. People are starting to report UFOs around the scene. Yeah, well, you know, you've got, you've got stuff they're going to roll out, you know, that, that comes from, uh, you know, deep black ops, which is, which is, which is the military industrial complex that floats around like UFOs. There's, there's those, those are not angelic. Those are not demonic. Those are military. But we're not supposed to have anti-gravity, so they, they got to kind of pretend it's a UFO. Okay, there's that. But there's angelic craft, too. I mean with the capability of taking out uh, whole cities or even continents, if necessary. And, um, and taking out Satan's army, if you will, his demonic, uh, you know, taking all that out. I think you'd agree with me that God and God's power trump Satan. So Satan will do what God tells him to do. Okay. Uh, too bad Christians don't know that. I can't believe they didn't teach that in the churches. They didn't teach the basic truths of Christianity to Christians. Maybe it's good they're burning down the churches. It, it's just going to show the real light of Christ, the light in the darkness is within us. It's within us. If we only wake up to that, we would be unconquerable, politically or militarily. But that's why they don't want that to happen. So we have an exterior thing called the church in a building approved of by the state. Um, so they believe they're bringing about the end times, you know, and they believe that, you know, after this world war, they can have a new world order. And, then, and, and they were supposed to have Obama as their, I mean, if Obama isn't their guy, the whole end times push goes to hell. But here's the thing. As Mike Horsey points out, and I told you, Mike, go, go call him uh, if you need any help with you, you know, because if, if we all survive this, you're going to want to have some gold on hand. It's cheaper now. They try to beat it down, but, you know, in the end, when the dollar's gone, at least get something you can trade. I mean, I don't know. But anyway, Mike Horsey pointed out, and I pointed out to you that hey, there are certain things that have to happen before you get to the abomination of a desolation where Obama would want to be worshipped in the, in the Holy of Holies because he accepts worship now. We see this. He doesn't cor correct it or eschew it. He, he accepts it. So he wants worship, and it's just that he wants it done in the right way. And also, he doesn't, he doesn't believe um, that if there's a deity in a human form that that, that deity, Obama, uh, should be criticized on Twitter or anywhere. And that would have to be silenced. And that's not going to happen anytime soon. I mean, that, in fact, just the opposite. His reputation now, people are starting to wake up to the fact that he is not a god. He is not a dictator. He's not a good leader. He's completely, utterly incompetent. And he's nothing. He's not what they thought. And so they turn. And um, something is going to come up, a scandal, some, I don't know, another, but a scandal that will really stick to him and will become emblematic of his entire failed presidency. And the whole thing will start melting down. And as that happens, the, um, you know, some people will start to wake up. But the performance we've seen in Congress has been hideous. The lack of morality, the lack of principle, the lack of leadership that we've seen in this regime and with this president has been historically the worst in human, in human history, not just American history, but in human history. The most embarrassing, the most incompetent, the most lying, the most immoral, the most despicable, disgusting, and perverse of all time. The only reason it's not famous, like some regimes of the past, or like, you know, the infamous Genghis Khan, or some of these Caesars, and Nero, and all that. Uh, no, this makes Nero look like a choir boy. Um, is to show the Lord's intervention, that what we should have is total nuclear war, complete depopulation, and people looking like deformed 
from their DNA experiments and walking around as mutants. That's what we should have with, with, with robot, uh, robots flying around, killing people, that uh, robot drones, robot police, robot soldiers, going around killing people if they say anything against the beautiful government or if they, say, if they notice anything going on around them is not kosher. Okay, um, that's what's deserved, but that was intervened upon, because that would be hell on earth, of course. That would be the same thing as Elysium on the, on the, on the earth before they went up, uh, before he goes up to Elysium. Um, you know. Yeah, Elysium. What a lousy movie that was. Very lousy filmmaking, lousy script, pedantic, obvious, no nuance, just just kind of a basic concept. Of no 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 idea how what Elysium was or what was happening. If it was Kubrick, you would have seen Elysium. You would have gotten it. You would have seen what how it worked, what it was all about. You would have gotten in the in the minds, and it would have been art. But in the hands of this this guy, it was you know, like a lousy TV show that should be canceled. But the concept got across. I know I don't recommend it. I mean, it's a waste of your movie dollar, but if you watch it on cable, I suppose you won't be disappointed. But anyone who liked that movie is an absolute idiot, art-wise. Fool, fool art-wise. Someone who has very low standards of art. Low standards of storytelling. Even lower than, say, a miniseries on TV are better than that. Some of these miniseries are actually very good, quite good. I'm just saying, this one was not that. This was very low. And apparently they forgot that when you're going to develop a world like Elysium, you have to show it and show some characters there and get people emotionally involved or else you have no story. But I guess, you know, um, since they're not allowed to say anything in Hollywood, that would be too risky, wouldn't it? Because they're slaves of the Hollywood from uh, all the haunt shows. When you see a haunt show on TV, like on TMZ or something, uh, you, you know, at, at Cannes or at a film festival, so or the Academy Awards, you know they're slaves, right? Like you see Spielberg, he's just a slave of, of the New World Order dupes, of, of corporate fascism. He's no individual. He is their boy. He does what they want. He is nothing but a propagandist. That is his role. That's all he does. So yeah, they make him fabulously wealthy because when you sell your soul, you, they pay you a lot of money if you got talent. So... He, of all people, should not criticize what's going on. He should love Obama and love this entire situation of eventually killing Christians and conservative, rounding up people so he can live in his beautiful monolithic world, his beautiful Elysium, without having to be bothered with people that think about such stupid things as individual liberty and honor and morals. I mean, that, no, we can't have that, Stephen. You just have to spout out that propaganda and keep it going. E.T., baby, do that a million more times. Indiana Jones. Yeah, Bread and Circus. You know, whatever artist is out there, you have no integrity, none. You don't deserve, well, in this society, you deserve to be at the absolute top. The more in the toilet you are, the higher you are. And then you deserve worship when you become a dung human. When you're covered in dung, that's when they're going to bow down. When you, when you worship eating dung and dismembering yourself, then they're going to bow down. Boy, then they'll really like you. Because you would be the embodiment of the end game of what it's all about. That's who they worship. That is the leadership. That's the corporate technocracy. That's their deep, dark secret. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, it's been soapbox opera here today. I'm sorry. I've, I've just, I feel this is a waste of time. It's a waste of time knowing everything I know. It's not a waste of time seeking the Lord for answers as to what's going to happen. Because that's the only thing that gives me hope right now is what's going to happen. Because I know you guys are staying the course, and I want to encourage you to pray and think on good things 
keep a positive attitude, and don't look at all this negative stuff. The stuff I brought up, just forget about it. Just, it has to be mentioned and read into the record because someone has to read it into the record. And so I'm doing that today. You know, just riffing on it. You know, I'm not going to go into specifics or, you know, I've seen enough this week to just make me sick to death and stay in bed for the next year or something. But I got to do, I got to say something. If you see something, say something. Well, what I've seen is really disgusting and it's really horrible because the end game of this thing is, like I say, um, putting poop up on an altar and, and bowing down to it. It's on that level. I, that, I'm just saying that's, it's like that's what they want to shape you into, that you have to agree that, that you know, good is bad, bad is good. You know, 1984, you know, all over again. The most, dis, you know, sewage is wonderful and it's, it's mana from heaven. Go ahead and bask in it. Deformity is beautiful. Be a mutant and, and dress it up. Cancer is lovely. You know, it's, it's on that level. And then health is bad. And wholesomeness is bad. And, you know, God is bad. And trying to make it a better world, that was also in the manual. If you want to make this a better world, your evil, a terrorist, should be rounded up. If you want to work for the good, your evil should be rounded up. That is all 100% satanic, and those people that have put that in those manuals are Satanists, straight up. Nothing else to see here. And what they want is global destruction. Oh, they may not know they want that consciously. They may think they're working for a new gleaming utopia, but they're working for to what they really, the appetite is for the more people dead, especially innocent, the more power release there is. So they want that power release. That's how they get you in. They get you to release your power and then and you, uh oh, now you gotta get it from somebody else and you know, you gotta be on the buddy system and then eventually you're you're showing the real game and then do you have the stomach for it? That's you know, that's why Proverbs and the Bible says don't even start down that path. If you do, you have to relocate, change your name, go somewhere else. It's just that bad. I know, who would have thought that, you know, a guy working at like a, a lowly mechanic or a lowly, you know, clerk in a store would have gone that way for money and power. <laughs> and that's where they wound up. And yet they enforce it. They're enforcers. They enforce it. If they see something, they're going to jump on it. Yeah. No, I, I know. You see enough of that and you go, Lord, just take it all out. Destroy it all. You know, it's, there's nothing here. There's, there's, there's nobody home. These people are all completely 100% controlled by... Uh, the machine, they, they don't exist anymore. The devil owns them. They, uh, they're not humans anymore. They're not individuals. They're just monsters of what they formerly were. They're just, they're just perversions of what they were before, when they were intact. And this, this, you know, nobody talks about this because um, they don't know how to talk about it. They just know it exists and they know they want to stay away from trouble so they, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, and they participate, so they unwittingly participate in their own and their children's and their grandchildren's total destruction. First perversion, then destruction. That's where all this goes. Now, we warned you the last how many years, and you're seeing everything we warned about is in your face, including your own mortality, right now. The only answer here is, well, one answer is, you and I can't fix this. Agreed? Only God can fix it, and only your relationship with Jesus, with, or God, if you will, same, same thing, or truth, all leads to the same place. Your relationship with that is the only thing that's going to save your ass. Period. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. How you get there is up to you. I would start by just crying out and saying, Lord, are you, you know, God, Yahweh, creator, it, controller of above most high. I don't understand this world. I don't understand all this evil, but uh, can you help me? Can you save me? And you'll see that anyone who calls on him, he, he's a person. He responds. That's what he wants. He wants you to call on him. And when you do, he responds. That's all I can tell you. It can't be fixed, you know. 
the people that relish evil or the people that belong to Satan, they're going to be the leaders of the world. Because, as we learn in the Bible, when Jesus met Satan, Satan showed him all the kingdoms of the world and everything in the world and said, it can all be yours. I can give it to you, meaning he owned it all. That is the entire world. So, therefore, uh, it's already expressed in the Bible perfectly. If he would bow down, if you and I would bow down, he offers similar things, just the, the same deal to everybody. So he meets Jesus, he offers him, in his case, being that he was so high and so much of the Father and the Son of God, he offered him the kingdom of the entire world, meaning he would be the, the globalist president of the entire world if he would just bow down, meaning that Satan had the authority to give the whole world, meaning that God gave it to him for this period of time, meaning that you and I can't change that. That's God's gift, and it's without repentance, I mean, to a certain point. But I mean, it's for this period of time to the end of time. Satan owns this world, period. And the only reason that you could oppose Satan and keep walking around is through the grace intervention of the entire kingdom of God, including all the holy angels is the only way you could walk around without getting picked off. The church told me, Zeph, you gotta become a member of Satan's kingdom in order to be a member here at the church or, or you'll get picked off. I'll say, no, I'm not getting picked off anytime soon. And I don't have that fear, buddy, pastor, you idiot. I don't have that fear because you know what? The Lord is my God. He makes a table for me in the midst of my enemies, Psalm 23. The Lord has always backed up that promise from day one. You, pastor, have nothing to offer me because you are of the devil. Enjoy your run around the kingdom. I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy watching your children die because they will. If this thing goes nuclear, um, you'll realize that where you're heading is not where I'm heading. No, but they gave you a church. <laughs> With the irony would be, what if the Muslim comes along and burns his church down? I'd be like going, yes! <laughs> so that'll save some souls, Lord. I don't know. It's, got, it's that back. So why wouldn't the Pentagon be that backwards if the rest of the nation is? Good's bad, bad is good, etc. So, but again, we had fact, we, we saw confirmations. Factionalized fighting intergovernmental, interagency fighting within the United States. No clear winner yet. Forces of light versus the forces of dark. Good people in the military fighting back. Uh, heavy duty power centers here and there with the power to unleash all hell upon the earth. Saying to these false generals, try it and you don't exist tomorrow. That's the kind of thing, the kind of hardcore war that's going on behind the scenes. Coupled with the intervention of the Holy God and all the angels in the entire kingdom, coupled with the fact that you saw Obama as a child kind of trying to slither out of this whole thing, realizing that this whole bombing thing um, would be an albatross around his neck, but also looking like the disrespect of Congress. And did you see when his news conference, when he made the slip and said, my military. Listen, you little twerp. That is not your military. And it never will be. You're a child, a punk. You wouldn't know how to wield that kind of power or you'd be a, be a, a good ruler uh, ever, a good leader ever. Especially not a leader of the military. You're an embarrassment as a um, commander-in-chief, that's a joke, only in name only, but you don't run things. Other people run it while you're off playing golf or out doing whatever Michelle wants you to do. Don't even try to act the part. You were put in there, you're a black guy, so you get a pass and all that. You know, so they use that so nobody can criticize you. It went to your head, you want to play dictator, but you know what? You got everybody else around you. They made you. Brzezinski and the New World Order globalist.
punks made you. You're their bitch. You know, you don't serve the people of America, that's for sure. You hate us. Hey, you want to make it all about race? And everything he says is a lie. I mean, that's the other thing I was saying. Even when he doesn't have to lie, which is really, he, like, he gets off on lying. So they keep having to like shuffle him off and shuffle him off to the side and shuffle him off the golf game and take him on vacation so that you don't ever get to know him. Because if you got to know him, you'd be like, what, what? You'd wake up, right? But, you know, it was really important that, you know, and then they want to they run, they want to appoint Hillary next as your leader. But something is just going very, very wrong here. Something on the way to all these plans is going very wrong. It's not really the alt. Alt media maybe stopped World War III, a little thing, you know, uh, quite possibly, you know, um, stopped World War III. You know what I mean? Exposing the false flag and all over Twitter, all over YouTube, all over everything, could have possibly stopped World War III. You know, alt media, other people, but it's also people in the Pentagon, people who are intact, who are still Americans, let's say. There's, there's, a, there's a force fighting back. So all this came against Obama, and who was supposed to bomb on Thursday. And, um, you know, it's the haves versus the haves, folks. And all of this stuff just melted down. And they kept begging people. They, he gassed his own people. He, we, he's done it lots of times. It doesn't even matter about this time. And it's like, uh, this, this is just so bad. It was a political meltdown. You were probably pretty sure a few days ago that he's going to bomb already by now. With the amount of assets that were sent over there, you'd think he's thinking that this is going to turn into World War III and maybe go nuclear. I'm sure there's you know, nukes in the, in the area. I'm sure they have that plan of having it escalate. Oh, well, we didn't know it would escalate, but well, there it is. We can't just let them nuke us, can we? We better fire everything we got, you know, and there you go. They, 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 there's their uh, straight to the basket. Would, uh, would, would they kill all of you to have their new world order and their little utopia with, you know, 500 million people on the earth? Well, I'll let you answer that. Would they sell you down the river like that? Do they hate you that much? Well, you bet they do. And that, that we don't even have to conjecture about. Yes, they hate your guts. You're garbage. They're just trying to find out a... a you know, a way to get rid of you. You know, they're trying to, they're all fighting to see who's going to be at the top of the pyramid right now. And I told you before, you're going to watch them destroy each other. So you can just get your popcorn out and sit back and relax. I did say that very boldly and cavalierly at that one time. And that may turn out to be the truth. But when we're talking nuclear war, I think everybody has a sense that, you know what, but if for some reason it does go that way, we're going to be dead. So we need to get right with the Lord. It would just be, may I say it, Father? May I say it, God? If it goes that way, this would be the most embarrassing, stupid, uh, sick, and childish, childish, utterly childish, immature, beyond belief, little exercise we had ever seen, and I just don't believe you, Lord, are on that level, that you would let, some, let them win by making something so perverse and stupid. You are not the God of stupidity. They are. That it would have been, ended up being just a perversion exercise by you, Yahweh. Okay? That it would just, you know, eventually just be this perversion exercise. Something in your stupidity, in your perversion. Nobody will talk to you like this, but I will. Because, you know, we have our talks. But you, you're not going to leave your reputation to be like that. you got your plan and your word. They don't seem to be going along with it. So that's it. And we'll see you next time.